In this video, I'm going to show you how to download a CSV file from Amazon S3 using the Java programming language. Uh, and then from there, I'm going to give you two different options of processing the S3 file's content. The first is just writing that to your local disk if you'd like to save that somewhere. And the second is to process that in memory so you can deserialize it and manipulate the objects in any way you wish. Um, so let's just take a quick look at what we have in S3 before we get onto the code section. So let's just go to S3 and take a look at this. Uh, so I have a bunch of buckets here. So mine is going to be in this bucket, the read from S3 demo. Um, I'm just going to copy this ARN here. This is the ARN of my bucket. I'm going to copy that to clipboard for later uh, because we're going to need that in the next step. Uh, and then I have a mock data file that I generated. This is just a very basic CSV file. And if we take a look at the contents by clicking on the top right here and going to open, uh, we should be able to see what is inside it. So uh, you can see here um, we have IDs, first names, last name, email, gender, IP, and then, you know, just some random data. This isn't real data, but just to give you an idea of how this exercise can be done. Uh, what I'm about to show you will work on any file with any header combination. So keep that in mind. Uh, so that's what the file looks like. So let's go over to the code now and take a look at what we need to do. Um, so I have this kind of template in my, my Java project already set up. Um, so we just have a main execute method and I already have my bucket name hard coded to read from S3 demo and then the object name, which is mock data. Uh, dot csv. That's the file name that we're going to be working with here. Obviously, you want to change this stuff to whatever you're going to be using. So I have a couple different steps of things we need to do. So first things first, we need to set up the S3 client, and then we're going to do option one, which is write to disk, and then option two, which is process in memory. So we need a access key and a secret key in order to get the permissions to download the contents of this uh, S3 file here. So what we need to do is to create a user that has the get object permissions for this S3 bucket. So let's go do that now. Uh, so I'm going to bring us back to the console here. And from the top section, we're going to go to IAM. Press IAM there. Um, so the, the first thing we need to do is create a policy actually that has the permission that we need. And then we need to create a user and bind that policy to that user. So let's go through the policy step first. Uh, so I'm going to click on policy here on the left. And then I'm going to go to the top blue button here and click on create policy. From here, we're brought into a wizard for creating your policy. So we're going to click on choose service. Uh, we're going to put in S3, click on S3. And then uh, we want read permissions. If you toggle this button, it'll check everything here. Um, you want to use the least permission model. So only give permissions or only give users permissions access to what they need to. Uh, so we want this one here, the get object uh, permission. So we're going to select that and click it. Notice how it now says one selected. Uh, now for the resource, now you can do this one of two ways. You can specify a very specific S3 bucket and file name if you'd like, or you can say, I want to give this user the permission to um, get any S3 bucket in any file. So I kind of want a hybrid between that. I want a specific bucket, which was the read from S3 demo. Um, so that's what we're going to do. I'm not going to restrict it to a particular object within that bucket, but you can do that if you choose. Uh, so I'm going to click on add our ARN here. And then, so we need to give it a bucket name now. So I'm just pasting the ARN that I had and I'm going to strip out the, um, the jargon at the front there. So now we're only going to apply this policy for the read from S3 demo uh, bucket. And then for objects, I want it to be all my objects in this bucket. So I'm just going to click on add. Uh, like I said, if you wanted to just restrict this to a particular one, then put the name of the bucket in there. Click on add now. And uh, this looks pretty good. You can also add some more details here if you want MFA or only accessible via source IP address, maybe for like permission lockdowns or something like that. But I don't need any of that stuff for this. Um, so we're just going to move ahead. Go to review policy now in the bottom right. You probably can't see it now because my face is blocking it, but I'm about to click the button review policy. Uh, then we need to give our policy a name. So let's just say this is the S3 read only get object policy name. Uh, okay, and we're going to click on create policy. And now our policy is created. So if you um, go and put S3 now into this filter, you'll see our policy now exists here. The S3 uh, read only get object. So that's the first step. Now let's go to a user and create a user that uh, is associated with this policy so we can get the access keys and the secret access keys. So click on add user here. Let's just call this S3 RO uh, get object similar to the policy. 
And we're going to use programmatic access here because we need those access keys. Click on next in the bottom right. Um, add user to group. So we, we want to do attach existing policies directly. I'm going to click on that button and then just filter now for S3. Um, so I, I just want to call out something here. Like first of all, we can see that our policy that we just created is down here. And we know that because it says customer managed. Whereas these other ones with the orange circle are uh, AWS managed, which as you might imagine means that AWS provides these policy templates for you. So we're going to be using this one down here, which is specific to this bucket. Uh, so I'm going to click that. I do want to let you know that there is another one that you could have used for this, which most people do, which is S3 full access. So this policy basically lets you do anything in S3, but following what I mentioned before with the least privileged model, you want to give your users permissions to as little things as possible. Um, so we're going to use my policy that I created and associated with this user. I'm going to click on next in the bottom right. I'm going to click on review in the bottom right. And then uh, we're getting a summary here. And I'm going to click on create user in the bottom right now. So from there, uh, this is the final confirmation screen. So you get an access key and a secret access key, which is what we actually want. Keep these private. Uh, you don't want to share these with anyone. The only reason I'm sharing this with you is because this is a demo and I'm going to delete this user right after this. So I don't care if you see this. Um, so we're going to copy this, the access key, and I'm going to paste that into my project now. So access key is this thing. I can now get rid of the to do save and let's get the secret access key Ooh, if that copies correctly copy that perfect I'm going to minimize that now because we actually don't need anything from there so let's paste that in and there is our secret access key perfect okay so now we need to set up our s3 client so let's go ahead and do that okay so the first thing is we're going to go aws credentials uh, and you can just call this credentials or whatever you want is equal to new basic AWS credentials. Then you need to pass in your access key and your secret key, which is what we just created. Oh, and by the way, you probably don't want to do this, like, you know, having your access key and your secret keys just in plain text in your source code. Uh, you probably want to have them in your environment uh, variables or have a file that contains these and read off that file during this. I'm just showing you like how to do this quick and dirty, but you know, there's obvious improvements that you will need to do here in order to make sure this is secure. Uh, so from there, we need to create our S3 client. So it's Amazon S3 S3 client, we'll call this, is equal to Amazon S3 client builder. Um, and then we're going to say it's a standard client. And then we're going to say with credentials. And we want to pass in the credentials we just created from right here. And then we also want to specify a region. I'm going to be using US East 1. Um, so we're going to say there's an enum for this. So it's regions dot US East one. And then we are going to do dot build, which is going to give us a S3 client. And I'm going to handle my imports now, uh, import class. And what do you not like here? Ch -ch 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 new basic. Uh, of course. Okay, so we can't just pass in the basic credentials object. We need to pass in um, a static credentials object. So we say new uh, static or AWS static rather static credentials provider. And then we pass in our credentials there. So that's what it is supposed to look like. Okay, so now we have access to our client. So we're done with step one. Uh, then we can actually use our client. So I'm going to show you the first option, which is probably the easiest because it only involves um, creating a request and then creating a file where you want to save this file to on local and then executing a method. So let me just show you how to do that really quick because it's super straightforward. So we're going to formulate that request now. So we're going to say get object uh, request and let's just call this request actually is equal to new get object request. And then you just need to pass in your uh, bucket and object name, which we already have here hard coded. So let's just say that bucket name, object name. And now we have that. Now it's super simple. All you really need to do is just create a file with an output path and then call this method and point it to the file. It's just going to save to that directory. Um, so we're going to say file, new file. Um, just get that import out of the way. There we go. Um, and then we're going to say equals new file. And then um, you need to give it the directory of where you want to save it. So let me, I have a cheat sheet here of my directory uh, where I want to save this. So let me just grab that on the side while I'm talking. Um, and by the way, I'm going to be making all this source code available to you so that you can download this and play with it yourself. So don't worry about copying this out of the video. I'll put that in the description section below. Um, so th this is the directory of where I want my file to go. And if I just expand my project at the top here, um, it's this directory. Actually, let me just expand here. So S3 slash demo slash downloads. 
Um, so we're in demo slash download. So it's going to be going to this directory and it's going to be called uh, foo.csv. That's the file that we're going to be saving to disk. Okay, so keep an eye on that because that's what's going to change when we actually run this guy. Uh, so from there, it's really easy. You just say s3 client get object and you put the object request in. So request and you just put in the file. And that's basically all we really need to do here. So we can just run this guy. And if everything worked, we should see a file pop up here in downloads. Um, and we have a file and what's in it? Okay, there's our, our CSV file that is all nice and formatted for us. Uh, so that's perfect. So that's the first way of how uh, we're gonna do this. This is useful if you just wanna grab this for you know some other purpose or maybe you wanna process this a little bit later. Uh, but how do we do this now if we wanna kind of pull this data into memory where we can you know inspect what the values are, process it, all that kind of stuff. Um, so we're gonna be using a um, package, or not a package rather, but a, yeah, I guess it's a package um, called Jackson that's gonna help us do this. And I'm using Maven for this, so you can see all my dependencies here. I'll just show you what I got uh, working on. So we have the AWS Java SDK for S3, and then I'm using the Jackson data format dash CSV, which is an add-on for the Jackson uh, mapper. Most people are familiar with Jackson. It's great for serialization and deserialization. Um, so I'm just using 2.12 version of the data format dash CSV plugin. Um, so in order to use this correctly, you need to create a POJO, which is a basic Java class that represents the fields that you're, that you're um, reading off of in your CSV file. So that's what I have here. I have a public class person, and then I just have the fields that correspond to my data object, right? So first name, ID, last name, email, gender, IP. I also have a to string um, just to print this out pretty, pretty nicely. And then notice this annotation that I have here at the top, which is JSON property order. And this is basically the order of the fields in which they appear in my CSV format. So you're gonna need this because this thing generates a constructor for you that helps um, Jackson automatically generate the POJO for each row that it reads off your CSV file. So make sure that you have this annotation on your class and you have it in the correct order in which the fields appear in your CSV file. So ours is in this order. If we take a look at the one we just downloaded really quick, it's, I make that bigger. You see the order is the same, okay? So that's just a, a little bit of a, a warning there just to make sure you don't run into any problems. So that's it for that. Um, so I'm gonna just comment this stuff out now because we don't need the option uh, two, which is writing to disk. Now we can do it the more interesting way, which is um, reading off the object itself and then manipulating it in memory. It's slightly different, a little bit more complicated, but not really, you'll see what I mean. Um, so what we need to do now is we're going to call a slightly different method to get the object and we're going to uh, keep it in memory and not write it to disk. So we're going to say s3 object, s3 object is equal to s3 client dot get object. And with this method, you just need to pass in your bucket name and your object name again, uh, similar to what we did before. Um, so this is what actually uh, calls, you know, s3 here, the s3 client dot get object. Um, so every line that we write after is going to be after the, the file is already fetched. Um, so if you like drop a debugger in here and inspect this file, you'll see like all the attributes of the S3 object in there. Um, but we want to kind of process that and read it in a pretty intelligent way so we can store it in like a list of person objects. So let's do that now. So the first thing we need to do is get the input stream because it's just basically a list of bytes uh, that we need to read off of and convert into our POJO class. So we're going to say input stream um imports input stream is equal to uh, s3 object dot get object i believe it's get object contents uh objects con wait is that right no no, no s3 object there we go dot get object there we go so that's going to give us an input stream now um so now we're going to use the jackson mapper to um to, to basically process the file in, in a convenient way. Now you can do this if you want, like you can read off the bytes if you want, or like read the lines one by one, convert to string, do whatever you need to do. But that's like a huge pain, so I, I just opted to use this, this library because it makes my life a whole lot easier, probably make your life easier too. Uh, so let's see this in action. Uh, so the next thing we need to do is create a instance of what's called the CSV mapper. This is a file from Jackson. So we're gonna say CSV mapper, mapper is equal to new CSV mapper. That's fine. And then we need to uh, define a schema that corresponds to the CSV file that we are working with in this case. So we're gonna say CSV schema, 
just call it schema is equal to uh, there's some defaults here so yeah we can just say empty schema and the, the key is this method here with header so what this does is when we actually read off of the file we won't get the header which is just containing the, the header content so id first name last name email address all that stuff we don't that we don't want that to mix with our actual uh, person objects so what that's going to do is basically skip this so that it, it doesn't read off that object first um, from there, we need to actually call a function now to read the content of the input stream. So we're going to say mapping iterator, and that's going to be uh, returning a type person. We're going to call this uh, red values, and it's going to be CSV mapper dot reader with type schema because this is a list. So you need to use that format or else you can just use just reader with and make this nicer. And then we're going to say with. And then you can just pass in your schema object there. Um, and this is complaining at me. What do you want? Change this to object reader. Ah, yes, I forgot the part where we need to uh, pass in the bytes from the input stream. So uh, we need to say um, read values. And we can just pass in input stream dot read all bytes. And this is going to throw an exception now. So you can either handle this or just add a throws to your signature, which I am going to do, which now requires me to do that in my main, which I will also do. And you're pretty much good to go. Um, so at this point, you can grab an iterator out of this read values object and just kind of iterate over each row. Uh, so let me just show you how to do that. So you can say while read values dot has next, um, you can just read off of each value now. So let's just say person current is equal to read values dot next. And then um, I'm just going to print out, uh, that was a, a macro that I used, by the way. Uh, I'm going to print out each person. Alternatively, you can add these people to a list and then like collect them all and do something. But I'm just kind of showing you the basics here to get you started. Um, so let's run that and hope I didn't screw anything up. And we should see all the rows printed out now. And that's what we got, right? So if we make sure at the top here, yep, there's no headers. Um, we, we don't have the first row showing like, you know, first name is equal to literally first underscore name. We're seeing the correct data values passed in for email, gender, IP address, and ID. Um, so that shows you how you can read data from S3 using Java. Um, I'm going to make this source code available. And if you like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks so much, guys. I'll see you next time.